Our speaker today is going to be talking us, uh, talking to us today about blockchain applications that are transforming society. He is Joe Rogers, the founder of Work Done. Let's welcome Joe together, shall we? Good morning. Oh, okay. So, uh, my name is Joe Rogers. <clears throat> I am the CEO and founder of Workdone. And uh, my uh, journey with blockchain started just over a couple years ago, um, having lunch with a, uh, a good friend of mine who had just uh, launched his own uh, blockchain-based music IP business. And uh, I had been following sort of Bitcoin in the, in the, in the you know, news for some time, but never really uh, jumped in or kind of thought it was, kind of thought it was a little hokey. But uh, uh, I'm, I'm really glad that uh, I had that lunch because it sort of changed the, uh, the uh, arc of my career. So uh, today we're talking about blockchain and how it's uh, affecting society and uh, transforming society. I, I chose to, to take this uh, more positively than negatively. So uh, I'm gonna talk about how blockchain is, is uh, affecting or transforming society for good. And I, I decided to uh, give you guys a break with the uh, all text slides. So. We're gonna look at a lot of pictures today. Um, and I'll do some hand gestures. So, for those of you who uh, don't, actually let me get a, an idea. How many of you are familiar with blockchain? Wow. Okay. How many of you are familiar with uh, DLT, Distributed Ledger Technology? Okay. So I'm gonna talk about what blockchain is. <clears throat> uh, Basically, it's, uh, next slide, please. It, it's, 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 in its essence, it's literally a, uh, a ledger that is uh, distributed. It's a, like a record book that everyone can see and uh, no one can alter. And it's distributed, so it's not centralized on one person's desk. It's on multiple people's desks with no one entity controlling them. So that's the definition of distributed ledger technology. Uh, technically, it, it's described as immutable, which means it can't be changed, and uh, decentralized, so there's no server room uh, with a, uh, in, a, in a high rise. Um, and uh, it's trustless, and that means that there is no third party that has to sort of, you know, give this uh, thing any value. It's really um, the, the, the group or the, the population that does that. And uh, what it does is uh, it provides for disintermediation, which is a highfalutin way to say, basically, it can remove the middleman. And uh, I'll, I'll get into that uh, a, a little bit later. So it's, uh, I've had some sort of knock down, drag out arguments with uh, multiple people saying, well, blockchain is no big deal. It's just another database. And uh, it's not. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about that right now. So oh, actually, go back. So this, this slide sort of uh, kind of Sim simplifies the process. Uh, in the step one, a transaction is uh, requested. So that transaction could be me paying you or transferring money. It could be uh, signing off on a contract. It could be any number of things. And then basically the, uh, there is a block that represents the, the transaction. And so that block is literally uh, written out to this list, this it just concatenated to the existing list. And before that block is, is written, it has to go through a, a step called consensus, which means, is this a real block? Should this be added? So you may have heard of consensus algorithms, 
proof of stay, proof of work. Um, won't get too into that, but uh, that, that has to happen before the block is written. And then once it's agreed that it's real, it's written to one, and then it, it propagates to all these other nodes uh, around the world, really. And those, are, those nodes are run by miners. You've probably heard that term before. Uh, and then the nodes validate the transaction. So each one, uh, after the first, each time it's written, it's, uh, it's validated. And, uh, and the miner receives a reward for th doing that work and, and sort of supporting that server or whatever that machine is that's supporting it. And the block is added to the existing blockchain. And then the transaction is complete. So for those of you who have you know, played with Bitcoin, if you have sent it to someone frequently or, or say like an exchange, which is like a, a, a sort of a Ameritrade or something like that, except for crypto, uh, the, they usually have a rule. It's, it's not just, it, they'll wait for maybe three or five blocks to be written before they actually credit the transaction. They wanna know that it's, it's, it's propagated and, and clear. If it's just one, it's not necessarily accepted. So, uh, next slide, please. So, uh, blockchain was came to being as a result of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, um, and it sort of was in the shadows of that for a while. But really, from a business perspective, it's it's very powerful, and uh, it's. There are a number of use cases for blockchain, but I think still to date, uh, the cryptocurrency is, is sort of the, the killer application. Um, it's kind of uh, neat to be alive right now to see sort of the, the creation of a new asset class. It's not often that this, that sort of thing happens uh, in existence. And uh, uh, some of you may be familiar with, uh, there was a tulip craze in Holland, like I think in the 1700s where the, they actually had value and people use them to, to, to barter or trade or buy things. And then that went away. And I think a lot of people had that sort of uh, expectation for, uh, for, for Bitcoin. Um, but it's, uh, and I, quite frankly, I did too, uh, to be quite honest. But uh, it's been now, I think, 11 or 12 years. And, uh, and as I've dug into it, I've come to realize the power behind blockchain and crypto is not going to go away. And uh, this isn't a crypto talk, but uh, we can't really talk about blockchain without spending a couple slides on cryptocurrency. And so for those of you who, who are sort of not familiar with Bitcoin, um, it's, uh, the, it's the notion of uh, creating a, uh, your own currency. Sort of, if you, I'm sure everyone here has been to Chuck E. Cheese at some point. If you go to a Chuck E. Cheese, you put a dollar in, you get four tokens. Those tokens will play any of the games within Chuck E. Cheese, and they're worth a quarter. Um, but they don't work outside of Chuck E. Cheese, so they have that specific purpose. And uh, if you, say, uh, knew that you were going to Chuck E. Cheese next week, and your buddy walks up and says, hey, I'll sell you six tokens for a dollar, you would buy those because they have this uh, stored value that you can then like use and it's it's a it's a good deal so that that idea sort of applies here you uh, there are as you, some of you may know thousands of uh, currencies that have been created uh, for you know various purpose purposes some for frivolous purposes some with real use cases and uh, and it's really quite fascinating that it's not managed by any government, uh, there's no tax structure around it. Obviously, there's a whole sort of dark web, sort of uh, uh, you know, malicious uh, sort of uh, aura around it. But it's not all that, uh, and it actually can uh, be used to uh, sort of grease the skids for specific specific purposes. Uh, and what's really nice about them, like not so much in the case of Bitcoin, but with Ethereum and some of the other uh, currencies like Stellar, they have something called smart contracts, which uh, actually allows you to basically 
when you're designing your coin or your token, you can create programmable money. And that is where the disintermediation comes in. So if you have, um, uh, say, uh, an, uh, you're buying a house and there's an escrow uh, or a trustee or any sort of transaction where there's a third party that's holding something until somebody else, uh, you know, fill, fulfills a commitment, that actually, that guy is, is probably not going to be around very long doing that job. He's going to have to find something else to do because the smart contract can be written to actually uh, do that job for, for the, the parties. And, uh, and it can happen automatically, and when it does, it's, it's, it's logic, it's code. The funds transfer, and everything is, is uh, done. So it's pretty interesting. Um, and the, uh, some of you may have heard in the, in the press recently, Facebook is um, rolling out their own currency called Libra. And uh, it's interesting with sort of uh, blockchain purists, the idea is no one person is supposed to be able to control it, or no one entity. And uh, there's, there, there are uh, debates as to you know, how true or, or real, is it a real cryptocurrency? And, and by that standard, uh, Facebook's is not, because they control it, they have the servers. It, it's, it's a limited number of nodes sort of spread out around the world. And uh, uh, I don't know all the ins and outs of how they're managing it, but um, it, it, they did seem to get a lot of support from various large organizations like Visa. So uh, we shall see. I mean, the combination of crypto and social you know, networking is, is brilliant and it's kind of obvious. So when you think about how Facebook has, you know, Two billion, I think. I'm not sure what the latest number is. Two billion people say, and they're they're all using a certain currency to transact. It kind of takes on sort of a whole new uh, profile, almost like its own country, uh, if you were to look at it that way. So it, it's something to think about. Um, but enough about crypto. Let's see. I uh, yeah. Thank you. Um, The slide says, don't believe the hype. Actually, there are uh, a lot of projects outside of crypto that businesses are uh, executing. And uh, the Stanford Business School for Social Innovation uh, did a study and, uh, of these blockchain implementers. And 14% of them said, OK, we're using blockchain, but we easily could have used some other tool, like a relational database. Uh, 66% of them said uh, they, they, blockchain actually was an improvement over the other tools that they had been using. And interestingly enough, 20% said that what they were doing, they were, were not able to do without blockchain. So uh, it's, the, the hype is, is real, and uh, it's worth you know, sort of looking into uh, from a business perspective, and also from a, a uh, social um, benefit perspective. Next slide, please. And, uh, and the reason I say that, there are a number of uh, sort of situations that have been sort of uh, just in the world uh, that uh, have uh, not really been dealt with that, that combined with blockchain and other technologies we can actually start to address. Uh, next slide, please. So one of them is uh, identity. So there are a lot of people in remote areas that are, you know, they don't have birth certificates or, uh, and the, these regions are underserved. A lot in like Africa and these um, like South, Southeast or the South Pacific, Papua New Guinea, that sort of thing. Um, and they are starting to get some infrastructure, and usually the first thing to come in is mobile. And with, you know, 2G or 3G and flip phones, all of a sudden everything shifts. And um, some of you may have heard how uh, 
I think it's Kenya, there's a, a, a company that has uh, sort of, it's not cryptocurrency, but it's mobile banking. So, and it's, it's, not a, it's not even on a feature phone. So you're just using codes and putting in digits and sending money to people. And this was a huge, huge jump for these people because the alternative before was to walk miles to, you know, sell a sheep or, you know, buy some, some, some grain or something like that. And, and then to, to actually pay, pay for that transaction. So uh, digital identity is sort of a, a baseline function that can then be layered on top of. And uh, another uh, example of this is uh, Estonia, the nation of Estonia, which back in the early 2000s was very aggressive in implementing technology long before, you know, with basically with the advent of the internet, there are a few years uh, behind it. And, uh, and their first major, I think since 2001, they've had digital signature for all of their uh, citizens. And as a result of that, all of the, the, the services such as voting and uh, various um, government type stuff, taxes, whatnot, is, is all, it can all be done remotely. And, uh, and the digital identity reduces the fraud it uh, increases the transparency and the uh, efficiency. So a lot of the problems that we have with voting would go away if implemented properly. Um, but that's another topic. So uh, blockchain would have a huge impact uh, with regards to identity. And um, next slide, please. Sort of following closely along behind that, is personal control over da uh, data. So <clears throat> we've all heard about you know these breaches or uh, social media, Facebook, uh, people legally uh, buying you know uh, data and for nefarious purposes, Cambridge Analytica, that sort of thing. And you know we've uh, I I was a sucker early on. I signed up and put all my data in, and then a couple years later I took it out, realizing it's kind of pointless, but and then I shut off my Facebook account for about five, six years, and recently I turned it back on, but I use it for a very narrow purpose. Um, clearly, they're doing very well with our data and uh, making a lot of money, uh, and we're not. Um, the blockchain will actually make it possible for us to retain our own data profile and basically give people permission to access it for a certain amount of time in exchange for whatever you want, really. You can price it how you wish. So uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm no expert, but I would predict probably within five to 10 years, there will be a, a, a competitor to Facebook that is all about privacy and your, your data will be secure. And, uh, and then you'll have sort of, um, various data profiles so that when you go to a new doctor, you don't have to fill out the same information three times on three different forms. You can just release your profile and it sort of uh, transfers over into the, the, uh, the EHR, the health record, and then you take it, you close it off. So blockchain definitely uh, makes that possible to, to um, create permissioned access. Uh, where individuals can retain control. It's, uh, I refer to that as the anti-Facebook. No way, 10 minutes? Okay, next slide, please. So, um, and speaking of healthcare, uh, same sort of thing. I mean, it's, it's been siloed, uh, and the uh, epics of the world and various uh, medical record, health record, software providers, it's, I think it's, I think it started to change uh, under Obamacare. I, I'm, it's been a while since I've, I've uh, been in touch in that world where they actually had to open up and have some interoperability, but I know before there were, it was a wild garden and if your data was in one, they, it was a pain to get it over to someone else and, uh, or even just to get the, the hospital to release it to, to you, the patient. Uh, it's very sort of screwed up. Um, I mean, I, I can see some arguments for not letting it out willy-nilly, but uh, it's definitely um, 
I think, important to uh, make, you know, health records available on demand and the patient should have control of it and the blockchain can help with that as well as a supply chain. So with um, medicine being delivered, uh, it's, it's sort of the provenance of that uh, medicine. How, how old is it? Is it what, you know, it, they say it is? Um, and uh, if it's still safe to use. So uh, uh, there's sort of the tip of the iceberg in the healthcare um, arena. Next slide, please. And uh, real estate. Uh, in some countries where so it's, uh, the, rec the record keeping isn't all that uh, strict, um, blockchain is, is really perfect for that. You can have a land registry tied to the blockchain, so it doesn't, you know, it, you can't alter it. And sort of a title search to see, uh, to get a clear record, it makes things, a, it's a totally different sort of ball game. And uh, uh, that would uh, curtail fraud in a lot of these countries. And um, basically, um, a lot of the sort of uh, the power would shift to to you know those who currently don't have it. Uh, so that's that's a huge, huge example. And um, I mentioned digital signature. Uh, with democracy, it's really about record keeping and sort of verification. Um, you know, I think there's a, a junior college in New Mexico I read about a while ago that puts all their diplomas uh, on the blockchain. So if somebody applies for a job, they can just go check and, oh, there it is. It's sort of public. And, um, and I, I probably should have discussed there's, there's public blockchains and private, uh, and they kind of work the way you would imagine. Um, one, of the, one of the issues with, uh, it, it's, it's, you want to, you want to have, often in business, you don't want everything to be open, obviously, but you do want to have some aspects open, especially on the supply chain, vendor suppliers, uh, customers. So it's really sort of a hybrid strategy is, is what's best. Um, and there's different, different approaches to that, but I don't want to get uh, too technical with that. Um, discussing provenance again, like uh, farm to table. What's uh, another interesting capability with blockchain is the ability to tokenize. So you can actually say, uh, we're creating this token to represent a, a pallet of lettuce. And that pallet of lettuce originates here. And the token basically represents, it can represent the, the financing of, uh, of that product or service. Uh, and it can trace its movement, and it can trace the transaction or the purchase of it. So when you when you tokenize something, you can actually uh, divvy it up and fractionalize it. So then, and it's it's much easier than if it were just sort of one fixed item. And that concept can apply to real estate. It can apply to you know famous works of art, whereby. Uh, you can actually buy uh, one one thousandth of the Mona Lisa or something like that, and because it's tokenized, that can now go on an exchange and it can be bought and sold uh, with very little friction. So um, and you just can't do that uh, with uh, the old way with fiat currency. So let's see. I'm getting the high sign here. Um, I just had a conversation about uh, energy generation and, and uh, transmission. Blockchain, there's, there are projects right now where blockchain supports a, sort of a, a, a microgrid where instead of everything going to the utility, it's peer-to-peer. -peer. So it could go from your battery, bank of batteries in your garage to someone else and, uh, and the blockchain can record that and credit, credit it and, uh, and it becomes a decentralized energy utility, which you know, I'm sure some of the utilities aren't too happy about, but it's, it's happening. Um, and, uh, and financial services. I'm sorry, next, uh, I think I missed. Boom, next slide, and next slide, and next slide. There we go. You guys didn't say anything. So, uh, there are two billion people that are still unbanked on the planet, and 
as I was discussing earlier with identity and digital signature, that basically that old flip phone that nobody really bothers with anymore is, is opening up the world for uh, a lot of these people and blockchain can be used for to make sure that these systems that they're using in Kenya or compared to Nigeria or Somalia, that they can actually be interoperable and, uh, and between, uh, between the different fiat currencies and between the different mobile systems and the different uh, fiat uh, currencies. Next slide, please. And, and lastly, uh, well, not lastly, in philanthropy, uh, there's a, a big problem with donations and tracking of like where that money goes and is it actually going to the purpose that was intended. And uh, blockchain actually facilitates that. Uh, it can be used to monitor and evaluate uh, how these donated funds are utilized. And actually, we're doing that with my, uh, with my new business, and uh, we have a foundation that's, that's associated with it. So uh, let's see. Next slide, please. I'm, uh, I'm going to skip this so I can talk about something else. Next slide, please. Um, and uh, interestingly enough, I have a, uh, full disclosure, a separate business, a consultancy that's an IBM business partner. And, uh, and uh, there is IBM has uh, their own blockchain and there's a company that is using uh, that blockchain for carbon tax, um, sorry, carbon um, cap like uh, purposes so that if you're a polluter, it basically tracks the, uh, the, the, the debits and the credits and it's, uh, it's really interesting. I'm not sure exactly how they make money, but uh, it's, um, it's a good use case. And so b blockchain can be used to track environmental compliance, uh, recycling, um, just pollution in and out. And, uh, and again, it's, it's transparent. Everyone can see it. It can't be, you know, sort of swept under the rug. So um, uh, next slide, please. Yeah. So work done is my business uh, that I started uh, at the end of 2017. And it is, it's a, an artificial intelligence startup that uh, basically learns what you do and then helps you get work done, um, so hence the name. And uh, we actually retain, as we learn what you do, we retain that as corporate memory. So when people retire or change jobs, that knowledge doesn't walk out the door. And then once we have that institutional knowledge retained, we can use it to drive agents, which are sort of like bots, like uh, robotic process automation type bots, but really they're sort of higher functioning. and. These agents basically reside on the blockchain because they're going to be running inside of your enterprise and we're SaaS only, sort of cloud native. So uh, it's, there will be uh, credentials uh, that these agents can use to say access emails or Salesforce or NetSuite or whatever to, to move data from one point to another after we watch the knowledge workers do it and, uh, and to ensure that we don't get any rogue agents coming in uh, we're, we're using uh, the Stellar blockchain for that. And um, as a uh, sort of a, a follow-on, realizing that uh, our expertise capture technology was, was going to free up a lot of people to do a lot more valuable work, uh, it's also going to uh, hasten a lot of people's uh, uh, exits uh, to find new work. So we actually set, up, set it up as a public benefit corp to create, uh, uh, to fund a nonprofit, which is called the Work Forward Foundation. And that actually is set up to receive funding from multiple AI or tech companies. And that funding is lot registered on the blockchain. And then, I won't get into it too much, but basically uh, the, it's, a, it's a social network that exists on the blockchain. It's called a, a decentralized autonomous organization. So with a funding mechanism, people that are in the, the community can submit proposals and the community votes on funding those proposals. So, it's a bit of an experiment, but basically, we want to use uh, AI and crypto to put people back to work because uh, this shift that's coming is, is going to be pretty swift. And uh, in closing, or not in closing, it's not all, um, you know, roses. There's, uh, they, 
to date, there's been, uh, there hasn't really been a major hack. There's been a lot of ex exchanges that have been hacked, but the actual currency, say for Bitcoin, has not been hacked. Um, but the way the, uh, the, the way sort of the nodes and the network uh, is set up, there's something called the 51% attack. If someone can gain control of more than 51% of the nodes, or, or, or of 51% of the nodes, then they can actually uh, take over the system. Now, if that person or entity has a lot of that currency, they have a decision to make. Are they gonna try to crash it and then they end up losing their value? Or they, even if they do the 51%, are they necessarily, they could actually mint more money or mine more, and uh, it's, it's an interesting thing. But the point is, it hasn't happened yet, and that's why Bitcoin still has value. And it's very volatile, and it's not for the meek, but uh, it's, it's um, people are constantly trying to, to break it and, and uh, subvert it. So that is one thing to be aware of, and uh, uh, yeah, thank you. And um, regulation is a major issue. The SEC is super slow in figuring out how they're going to treat crypto, um, but uh, as separate from blockchain. And um, and there's issues around sort of these consensus algorithms. Uh, blockchain, or I'm sorry, Bitcoin. Uh, it was in the paper, like uses the same amount of energy as like Ireland or something like that. It's it's there there are workarounds for that, but it, it's it's a problem, and there's uh, with the uh, it's it's a little early yet, but quantum quantum computing actually poses a threat as well. There's some question as to how that's going to affect the uh, encryption algorithms that are used to uh, to uh, basically in these algorithms. So uh, it's important that uh, you know keep your eyes open. And uh, lastly, in closing, I don't know why I went with the dog, I just like it. Um, I think that blockchain will have a very positive impact uh, on, our, on our society. Basically, it's going to remove a lot of middle, middle stuff that drives up costs, so it's gonna reduce transaction fees and uh and and speed up you know sort of transactions and um there's a, a much higher degree of security and trust and uh and uh there's more openness and transparency and uh and dependability and reliability so and it actually sort of makes a, a more tight integration of the the digital and, and physical world so uh uh, with that, uh, do you guys have any questions? Stunning. Yes. The question is, what are some of the things that we haven't been able to do that we can do now with uh, with blockchain? Yeah. So, what do you? What's, um, your vision? what's your vision? Yeah. Sure. So, uh, I, yeah. Really, it's there's a, a lot of power uh, around sort of the notion of a smart contract and uh, being able to structure. You can structure lots of aspects of businesses uh, two, two, and two, workflows three, within one, smart two. contracts and uh, the notion of programmable money that uh, that when something happens it knows what to do and where to go and that can trigger other events uh, it's it's pretty interesting when you when you start to think about it like for an insurance claim or something like that um, for example is that Sure. Yeah. Okay. I think uh, I'm getting the hook. Thank you all very much.